This is the Merritt's Silverado Extreme. Uh, they call it the 941L. This is the bigger of the two Silverado scooters that they had. Now Merritt's is uh, in January of 2022 getting rid of the Silverado 941A. This is the larger version, the Silverado Extreme 941L. Uh, this is a recreational scooter, so this is not technically considered a handicapped scooter. So just be aware on certain scooters like this, there is tax. Um, like well, on, on some scooters, there's not if it's a, a handicapped scooter. So um, this scooter is made primarily for outdoors. And the multiple reasons what it's made for outdoors is um, your speed, your battery distance, uh, your suspension. Um, but really the overall length and width of the unit is going to limit you from using this really inside. So it's about 60.8 inches, so we'll just say 61 inches long and just a little bit under 29 inches wide. Um, the unit comes standard with a 20 by 19 deep seat. Uh, it does have a 450 pound weight capacity. Um, so if somebody thinks that seat's not wide enough, you can expand the arms out with knobs in the back to get more distance in between your arms. Um, but that is the standard size seat it comes with. And I'll circle back around to the seat in a minute. You have 14 inch front drive tires, 16 inch rear drive tires. Uh, you have full suspension in the front and in the back you have a massive spring coil in the back which does give you very, very good suspension while driving. Uh, it does come standard with 75 amp batteries, which they say gets you up to 55 miles on a charge. Now I'd be skeptical of that. If anybody else has had one of these and you wanna comment on the YouTube video of how many miles you've really gotten out of it. Um, but in general, I like to tell you about 35 miles just so that way they're not gonna get stranded somewhere. But the specs do say up to 55 miles on a full charge. Uh, it also says up to nine and a half miles per hour. Um, I just drove this outside to check. I got it to like 9.2. Now I am a 220 pound man, a little bit of an incline outside. Um, so, but 9.6 is the maximum speed that this will top out at. Um, so a couple things that we'll go over with this unit um, is that people want to know a lot of different things such as ground clearance. So if you look at your ground clearance here, you're at about five and a half inches of ground clearance from the bottom of the floorboard to the ground. Now you might be a little bit less at the motor. A lot of times they don't give you what that measurement is. Uh, I'll see if I can get a pretty accurate measurement with that. But yeah, you're about the same. Your motor's actually raised up pretty high on these units. So about a five and a half inch ground clearance all the way around on the unit, which is pretty impressive for a scooter. Now this says this can, gr this can go up a 10 degree incline gradient, um, which is also a pretty good climbing angle. A lot of handicapped scooters climb at a six to seven degree incline, so 10 degree incline is significantly more. A uh, couple measurements that people also like to know is what is the seat to, to ground height? So on this one, your seat to ground height is about 28 inches. That's from the top of the seat to the ground, it's about 28 inches. Now this is the lowest seat position that this can go in here, so you cannot get the seat to ground height any lower. Your seat to floorboard height is about 19 inches. And once again, that's as low as that can go. So 19 inches from the floorboard to the front of the seat. Um, the width of your deck on this unit is about two feet wide. So it's a pretty wide deck. And then for actual floorboard space, you have almost 16 inches, about 15 and a half inches of floorboard space. So those are a couple of measurements that people really need to know about getting in, getting out of the unit. Now this seat does have a reclining seat. So it was already reclined back a little bit. Um, you can pull the handle and you can recline back. Most of them go to about 110 degree limited recline is what they kind of call a lot of these seats here. Uh, the seat armrests do flip up if you want to get out. Um, and then you can actually just take your armrests. There's knobs in the back. You can expand them out or completely take the armrests off. Um, the seat does have a swivel seat. So you can swivel and get in from the sides. And the seat also has a depth adjustable seat. So you can come to the side, slide it forward, rotate back. Now obviously you're going to lose floorboard space, but if you're a smaller individual, you might want this seat closer to the tiller. Uh, if you're a taller individual, you can pull this handle, slide the seat back, and now that gives you more of a, of, of a room to get in or to drive with the unit. Um, on the Silverado Extreme, it does have a nice delta tiller, um, and it also has an adjustable tiller here. You push this knob, and then you can pull the tiller down all the way like this if you wanted to store it or you can bring it all the way up. So another thing a lot of people ask us a lot of times too is, hey, if I wanna store this, what's the maximum height that it's gonna be at? So typically you don't need the headrest, you can take your headrest off and you can fold the tiller down into a position like this. So as you see, the top of your seat is still gonna be your highest point. 
uh, but let me get you what that measurement is. So if you were to fold it down like this and you're trying to store it, you're at about 41 inches to the top of this to the ground for any type of storage purposes. Bring your seat back up, slide your headrest back on, raise the tiller back up. So there are multiple speed settings that come on this unit. Um, you can adjust the speed, but the top end speed is about the nine and a half miles an hour. You do have a handbrake here if you really wanted to stop extra fast, but you actually have electromagnetic brakes in the back that as soon as you let go, it's gonna stop you. Now granted, if you're going nine and a half miles an hour, it might take a little bit more, but in general, two or three feet to come to a pretty fast stop. Uh, you do have air tires, so it's gonna get you a better ride, front and rear, with air tires all the way around. Um, you have a headlight and you also have tail lights. Um, on a unit like this, in the back, there is a knob back here that you can push forward and it will disengage the motor and then you can freewheel it. Now it's a heavy unit so you're not gonna wanna push it around all the time, but you do wanna make sure that lever is down in the locked position for you able to drive the unit. Um, something that I not, did not realize on this unit is it looks like they have like a cigarette lighter or an old, phone, old school phone charger built in right here. So that is built into the unit. Um, you have turn signals, headlights um, up here on your display. When you turn the unit on, it's actually going to show you that you're going to have uh, your Fahrenheit or Celsius uh, temperature gauge. It's going to have a trip distance and a total distance, and then it's going to have a clock and your speed. Um, so it's all digital up here. Um, a nice part about driving this unit is you have a really nice um, throttle that's really big, so it's not like a really small throttle that you can't find to get your hand on. Um, and you technically could drive this with your thumbs or with your index fingers, whichever way you decide to drive it. Uh, up in the front, you have a large storage compartment here. So if you had a big gulp cup or something like that, you could stick it in here and you could have your drinks. Um, and the back of the unit on the seat, I'm gonna swivel the seat and show you. The seat locks about every 45 degrees. So in the back of the seat down here, there is a rear docking device. So in there, you can get rear accessories like baskets, oxygen tank holder, cane holder, walker holder. Um, and a lot of companies don't sell them anymore, but there's aftermarket canopies that will slide in there and then you can really have shade while you're driving on the unit. Um, now these units are tested in some type of weather, but it is best to not try to get them wet. Um, there's no rhyme or reason, but I've had some people get them wet a little bit and mess up electronics. I think we'll get them soaked and then not be messed up. So it is better to try not to get them wet. But being here in Florida, uh, if you're out and about, it is inevitable at some point you will get a little bit wet. Take this, we'll swivel the seat back around. So once again, this is the Silverado Extreme 941L, uh, 450 pound weight capacity, up to 55 miles on a full charge. Like I said, I'd be skeptical with that measurement. Um, and then the 9.6, up to 9.6 top end speed, um, full suspension front and back, air tires all the way around. This is just a really, really nice unit. If you have any questions, give us a call. We'd be glad to help you. Hi, I'm Mark. And my name is Alex. We're co-owners of Mark's Mobility. I started this company in 1995. We sell many products, not just what you see in this video. If you have any questions or concerns, please call us at the number below at 800-677-6293. Thank you and have a wonderful day.